Hey guys, it's God Bars here, the self-proclaimed hip-hop historian, and this is the 221st episode of my series where I grab a vinyl from my collection, talk about why I love it, what influence it has, and what its place is in the grand scheme of hip-hop. So I previously talked about West Coast Legends, Compton's Most Wanted, a little while back now when I covered MC8's for a solo album, We Come Strapped, from 1994. But if you check out my review for that album, which I'll link down below, you'll see that I love that LP, it just can't quite live up to the gangsta rap masterpiece that is music to drive by. This is one of the earliest and most essential crews that California hip-hop has to offer, and I believe the first iteration of the collective included MC8 and The Chill as the two kind of leading members. But the roster also had legends like DJ Ant Capone, who would end up leaving the group before their first album dropped due to some internal disagreements. And then the other members included DJ Mike T, DJ Slip, and the unknown DJ, who was a giant pioneer in G-Funk and West Coast rap in general. This dude not only was a massive part of Compton's Most Wanted and played a key role in developing their sound, but he also produced various other impactful early California hip-hop tracks, like King T's You Better Bring Your Gun, as well as the insanely influential Ice-T song Six in the Morning, which in turn was of course inspired by Philly legend Schooly D's Parkside Killers or PSK. CMW may have been formed in the late 1980s, but they wouldn't release their debut album until 1990 with It's a Compton Thing which would then be followed up the next year with 1991's Straight Checking Em. Both of those are essential, solid projects that are definitely worth listening to. But as I alluded to earlier, my favorite record from Compton's Most Wanted is hands down music to drive by. CMW may not have transcended the genre quite to the degree of other California legends like N.W.A., Tupac, Ice Cube, Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, or Ice-T, but in my book, they're definitely still a top-tier West Coast hip-hop act, alongside other legendary groups like The Dog Pound, Above the Law, The Far Side, Hieroglyphics, Freestyle Fellowship, The Coup, Jurassic Five, The Alcoholics, Loot Pack, and Cypress Hill, just to name some. But one aspect that separates Music to Drive By from a lot of the other West Coast releases from this time is the more slow, dark, and menacing approach that MC8 and the others were beginning to take to gangster rap. One of my favorite verses on this stellar LP comes off the song In Too Deep, where 8 paints a vivid and disturbing picture of someone who has one foot a little too far into the streets to the point they aren't really able to pull themselves out. He gives us a lyrical POV of this situation, rapping, I guess it's true what they say, when you're too far gone, ain't no turning back, and coming from the Compton Mac, that's a fucking fact. Living in the city where bitches won't give up the pussy for free, so a rapper don't. So here's my story, another story about a who lives his life by the fucking trigger. Gotta get my serve on, brother, you don't hear me though. Throw up the hood, might last on 5-0. First I hit the eyes and get pumped up, now I'm rolling in the car, kinda slumped up. I pop the glove box, then I reach the block, then I plug your ass in the chest with the clock. And that's how the shit gets done, I guess I'm a motherfucking rapper on the run. But I won't let them take me alive, so I don't sleep, cause gia, I'm in too deep. This song actually has a guest appearance from another titan when it comes to early mid-90s gangster rap, with Scarface of Ghetto Boys taking the mic for a verse, and he has surprisingly good chemistry with CMW. Face is actually the single guest appearance on this project, and considering how the production is handled in-house by the likes of MC8, DJ Slip, DJ Mike T, Rick Rock, and of course the unknown DJ, I think I'm going to take the extra time to share another one of my favorite verses off this thing. 
there's a truckload of dissing that goes on all across music to drive by. And while the interlude skit type of thing directed at Tim Dog in response to his infamous Fuck Compton song is probably the most direct and upfront example of this. The track I wanted to share some lines from is Death Wish 2, which of course preceded Death Wish 3 off We Come Strapped and was a follow-up to the original Death Wish off their previous album, with all three being diss tracks pretty much directly aimed towards their longtime rival, DJ Quick. This entire song's really nothing but CMW going straight at their target, but I think the second verse has to be my favorite, with MC8 saying, I guess it's time to get to the good part, yeah, you know it's the part where the eights start with the routine, it's the same song, peel another cap, now what's going on? Yeah, tickety talk, you don't stop, fool, you hear a click, I bust your chops. Right, no future in your frontin', smoke your ass like a motherfucking blunt, damn I hate ya punk. Cause you'll never equal this motherfucking sequel. Tell me can you fade that black or get slung like a fucking 50 pack? So it's the second call, they're all sorry. Punk motherfuckers that's out like Atari. Yeah, homie you can get the fist. One more death wish. While the more slow and steady pace that MC8 raps at may not be for everybody, in my opinion it fits perfectly for the type of music these guys made and his place as both an actor and MC amongst West Coast hip-hop royalty is virtually undeniable. For my honorable mentions on this one, I ultimately chose to go with Hit the Floor, Jack Mode, Compton for Life, Ain't Is Enough, Duck Sick 2, Dead Men Tell No Lies, This Is a Gang, and Another Victim. Then when it comes down to the overall top three favorites outside of the ones I discussed earlier, I had to narrow it down to songs like Hood Took Me Under, I Got To Get Over, and Hood Rat. Thank you for watching my 221st video. Next up we have what I would argue is maybe the single most underrated solo Wu-Tang project. So look out for that one, and if you enjoyed, be sure to like, subscribe, and let me know what tracks you return to the most off this Compton classic. Don't forget to have a great day, and I'll see you next time, okay? Yeah. soul is locked in the cage it opens the framework was made from my own rib cue what came first the crack of the crack lighter whichever one the first fiend used to bring back fire